Given it's one of my favourite TV shows, I have kept up with a lot of post-Friends projects from Matt LeBlanc, Lisa Kudrow, Courtney Cox, Jennifer Aniston, David Schwimmer and Matthew Perry, rest in peace. And the Matt LeBlanc sitcom episodes had been on my list of shows to try at some stage, but I'd never actually checked it out until now for a very specific reason. I made a video about the largely forgotten Friends spin-off Joey last year, and a lot of comments I got on that were claiming that to some degree episodes is essentially a Friends spin-off. It features Matt LeBlanc, David Crane is a co-creator, and a key technique it uses is confounding what people expect of a show tangentially related to Friends for the purposes of dark humour. I'll get into how it does that in a moment, but I want to begin with the bigger picture. Metafiction is a pet subject of mine, and you might think that a famously meta show with the most meta title you could think of for a TV show about the TV industry would be something I'd be desperate to check out at the first opportunity. But it's actually because I knew what episodes was about that I put it off. And having now watched the entire thing, I do highly recommend episodes. But I feel it's been somewhat mislabeled as a comedy drama, when it actually should be referred to as the most soul-crushing piece of horror drama you have ever seen in your life. I consider myself a creative person. I've written scripts, made short films, entered competitions, festivals, and released a ton of original material for years, and this fact about me as a viewer changes the way that I experience the genre of episodes. The show starts on Sean and Beverly, played by Stephen Mangan and Tamsin Gregg, who are TV writers and also a married couple. They've had a hit TV show in the UK called Lyman's Boys. It wins a big award and gets picked up for an American remake by an LA network head who claims he loves the show. My fantasy is I wake up tomorrow and I've got your show on my network. But then they get over to LA and get told otherwise. There is a chance. Merck may not have actually seen your show. What? What? I'm not saying that he hasn't seen it. Has he seen it? No. Uh, hello? It's a hit? It wins awards? It ran for four years? Yeah, Merck doesn't actually care about the show for the show. He just cares that it was successful. This is just an industry fact, of course. Go on filmmaking courses, listen to lectures by industry people, a very common bit of advice when writing a script and building a pitch deck is to focus on getting some name recognition and prestige attached to it. If you can get someone on board with your project who's won a big award like a BAFTA, you can put BAFTA winner in brackets next to their name. And Sean and Beverly's show won big at a prestigious UK award ceremony. It's not a particular joke or a story that they wrote, the show didn't emotionally connect with the guy that took a chance on them, it's the fact the industry recognised them. That's what matters. Of course, if you want to be a creative for a living, you always have to strike the right balance between your artistic side and the business side. And Episodes is a show about people from the UK who have a much more balanced view of creativity, being taken to a place where the business side has completely engulfed the artistic. Hollywood. Of course, the phoniness of Hollywood is so well known at this point that it's basically a cliché. People will just put a happy face on and say you're a genius because that's the way they understand how to get people to like you. But do they actually like your stuff? Is there any actual artistry in this town at all? This isn't the place where the soul-crushing horror of episodes comes in, though. The soul-crushing horror of episodes comes in when the network sets up a meeting for Sean and Beverly with Matt LeBlanc, recommending he play the lead. A role that he's obviously wrong for. The original actor they had in this role when they made it in the UK was Richard Griffiths. That's how removed from the original intent this ends up being. Matt LeBlanc replaces Richard Griffiths. You know, the last time I had to audition was 87. It was to do Private Lives with Dame Judy at the National. And Sean and Beverly have basically no say in whether or not they consider him. Matt shows up to the meeting playing himself and they realise almost immediately that Matt has no idea what the show is and doesn't really give a shit. But the difference between him and the network head is he says it. Yeah, t well, to talk about our show. What show? Brilliant. So you're not a huge fan? Of England? Uh, no, no, of, of us. Oh, you? No. That's where the horror comes in. Matt is the first person that Sean and Beverly meet in LA who's actually honest with them. Even though it seemed over the course of this introduction that Sean and Beverly hate the two-facedness of LA, they're getting used to the idea that no one actually means what they say. Matt does, or at least he appears to. Sean and Beverly are surprised by Matt. He's intelligent, cultured, charming, and he does actually watch their original show after this meeting, and he loves it. 
And they're taken aback by that. Wait, Matt LeBlanc likes something intelligent and soulful. So funny and smart, Jesus. I love it. You're serious? Uh, yeah. I love the writing, the characters. When they're first told the network is essentially forcing them to cast Matt LeBlanc, Sean says this. For the erudite, verbally dexterous headmaster of an elite boys academy, Joey. He calls Matt himself Joey. And he's not wrong to do this because everyone thinks of Matt LeBlanc like that. There is a degree to which Matt LeBlanc is more typecast than the other five actors from Friends. His character on Friends being this cuddly puppy dog of a man just gives him this vibe where you don't expect him to do anything serious or dramatic afterwards. For example, it might sound completely random to get one of the key cast members on Friends to be one of the presenters of British motoring show Top Gear. Imagine if they got David Schwimmer or Matthew Perry to do that. But when you say it was Matt LeBlanc that did that for a few years, your average person would probably just go, oh yeah, of course. Yeah, it seems weird and out of nowhere at first, but I can see why that happened. It's just a vibe he gives off. Matt LeBlanc is a unique actor where his skills that were always completely obvious on Friends, and also Joey, as much as people might want to claim that Joey had no good points, Matt's skills vastly eclipse the fact that he was typecast in such a massive cultural behemoth to the point where Episodes is actually the ideal show for him. Episodes uses the audience's perceived notion of what everybody assumes he must be like in real life based on our understanding of the character of Joey. While Joey was always a bit of a morally dubious sleazeball, the easygoing tone and the fact that Friends became comfort food TV for millions of people means that no one ever saw him that way. The slobby mess of Joey was hidden inside the cuddly framework. But presenting Joey as Matt, in the real world context, as someone who's incredibly dangerous to Beverly and Sean's careers, and then to their marriage, by challenging the audience's notion of who Matt is as a person, the character of Matt LeBlanc ends up being like this soul-devouring monster out to destroy everything he touches. Through some subtle manipulation of Beverly, Sean and the network executive Merck, Matt manipulates the situation to make it so their soulful British comedy about an elite boys' school, where the headmaster has a tragic, can never be requited infatuation with a gay librarian, gets retooled so now it's a Ross and Rachel will they won't they sitcom about a children's hockey coach called Pucks. With an exclamation mark on the end. And that's where any creative person watching this show will just feel bleak. An original idea that cultured people like Matt will see value and artistry in will get chewed up and spit out by powerful people like Matt with all this meaning digested and shit out of it. Pucks is a hollow, empty shell of a show with nothing to offer the world anymore, just to fill some airtime. But somehow, it's even worse than that. Spoilers here, after some drama escalates, Beverly ends up sleeping with Matt after she thinks that Sean had an affair when he didn't. Sean finds out and their marriage disintegrates. But they can't split up and never see each other again because this shit pilot for this shit show that's nothing like the show they wanted to make becomes a huge hit. So now they're stuck in LA and have to continue working together on something they have no investment in at all, starring the man that ruined their marriage. Wow. I don't think I've ever seen anything that's got the word comedy attached to it be this cruel to its characters. You know the scene in Misery where Annie gets Paul to burn the only copy of his new novel? It's famous for being one of the most painful scenes for writers to watch because you know just how much of yourself goes into your work. It's like a part of you on the page and he's being forced to set fire to the only copy of it. Episodes basically takes the guts of that scene and blows it up to giant size and makes it the entire arc of the show. Everything that Sean and Beverly try and do creatively gets ruined by the machinations of the industry that promises creative freedom but delivers anything but. There's a buzz about a script from their drawer that they have networks desperately pushing them to make, despite Beverly's unease about it based on their previous horrible experiences, and she's right, even something that seems perfect for them, and seemingly with an easy path to TV, gets ruined by personal drama. But it's easy to see how these things happen because the system of network TV means its understanding of what's going to be successful in the future is rooted exclusively in its prior successes. 
which is stupid, short-sighted, and will overlook and miss obviously good ideas with potential, while chasing shit ones that just resemble past successes, with no understanding of why those past successes worked in the first place. And that's the point where episode sort of turns into a spin-off of Friends. There's this dispute in season 1 between Matt and Sean and Beverly over whether the librarian that Matt's character is lusting after should still be gay in this version. And this is Matt's argument as to why they should change it. There's something wonderful about your character loving this woman he could never have. I agree. You do? Absolutely. Then why change it? You, you gotta give yourself places for stories to go. How long do you think Ross and Rachel would have lasted if Rachel had been a lesbian? Or Sam and Diane on Cheers? And Sean is convinced by this argument. But what Matt's ultimately done there is frame his understanding of how TV shows should work through his one big success. This comes back to how in Hollywood the business side of the industry has completely engulfed the creative. Those initial comments I got suggesting that episodes is essentially a spin-off of Friends were right, but it will be hard to see this viewpoint if you think of it literally. Because Episodes is not a spin-off based on any one character, it's a spin-off about the reputation of Friends as a show, and how network TV understands TV shows entirely through the success of things like Friends. Episodes basically gets Joey himself to say directly to the TV industry, the way you look at shows through the lens of things like the show I'm famous for is not conducive to anything creatively. Because while Matt might sound right here, he's actually wrong. There is no longevity in a show like Parks, and it would have just been better if Sean and Beverly had made the show they wanted to make. Because Parks is critically slaughtered. It's popular in the short term, but the ratings crash within one season and everyone hates working on it, and it becomes an ongoing punchline in the industry. Guess what our favourite TV show is? Parks? No, seriously, guess. And after it's removed from the schedules, it gets recommissioned for six extra episodes purely so the head of the network can spite a rival network. So everyone's stuck making six episodes that they know won't even make it to air. We know stuff like this happens. Matt even references the eight episodes of Joey that were shot that were never aired. Parks wasn't made to be art. It was entirely an exercise for Matt to demonstrate his power over Sean and Beverly. Look at what I can do to your creative product, because I'm Joey and you're not. There is an extent to which the fictionalised Matt LeBlanc we see in episodes is the Joey we expect him to be. He's a slob, his personal life's a mess. There's many scenes and arcs where he's portrayed to have the attention span of Joey and gets excited by obviously shit ideas. Or well, what if I'm a pimp? Or what if you're a pimp? It could be this cool, dark, edgy show. I'm a slime ball, but I care about my girls. I got a title. Pause. But this actually provides cover for the viewer to be confounded by his actions. By being typecast and the show featuring him as himself, the viewer fails to see through Matt's Joey-like exterior and see the cruel, calculating bastard that he really is underneath, that's always trying to get what he wants no matter what. So he'll always catch you off guard. Matt claims his kids are the best thing he ever did, and in the moment where he says it, you believe it. It feels sincere because, well, he's Joey. He's just naturally charming. But his words and actions don't match. Throughout the show, his kids are always an inconvenience. He has to try and palm them off on his ex-wife so he can continue his affair with Merck's wife uninterrupted. And he continues getting away with this behaviour because when the viewer sees and hears him, we see and hear Joey. We don't see and hear the utter bastard that he really is. I mean, not really, obviously. There's no way Matt LeBlanc is actually like this in real life. But this is the show proving that he can do and say all these horrible things right in front of us, and we just don't take any notice. This is obviously done because, as said, the audience has this blurry understanding of the dividing line between the characters on Friends and the actors that played them, because of the show's popularity and the way it worked its way inside your head, to the point where it almost felt like the characters on Friends were your real friends, hence the name. Episodes is an incredibly interesting way of playing with what the viewers expect when given the image of Joey by having the character of Matt LeBlanc clash so violently with what we expect of Matt LeBlanc based on the cuddly, warm, nostalgic thing that we associate Matt LeBlanc with, while at the same time retaining remnants of the character that he's known for to trick you into continuing to see him as Joey. LeBlanc's persona in this show is disturbing for people who are so used to him as Joey, it's another part of the reason why I think the show is inaccurately labelled a comedy, when personally I think it should be a horror. 
Matt keeps getting away with things because he's Joey. Even Sean and Beverly, after everything this man's put them through, believe in season 5 that Matt's going to look out for them when they go into partnership again, when obviously he won't. The man's a monster, you both should know this by now, but they don't. Lines in episodes are phrased like jokes, but they're a totally different style of comedy than Friends fans would be used to. A lot of bits from Matt are him delivering long, disturbing stories from his childhood that end with dismissive jokes that addresses how uncomfortable he's just made Sean feel. Friends is warm and comforting. Episodes is blunt, cold, and cruel. Look, obviously you can't put a price on your children's happiness. But it turns out you can. They showed me a spreadsheet. That said, Sean and Beverly are incredibly likeable characters, and it operates on a principle of putting our characters in positions of extreme adversity, trying to battle people in the industry like Merck, like Matt, like Helen Bash, who all have their own agendas that will destroy any hopes they have of getting something that's actually good on the air. Then I enjoyed the friendship between Beverly and network executive Carol, who underneath her carefully calculated exterior shows that she is an actual human after all. While Episodes does have a fair bit of sparkling, funny dialogue, I wasn't laughing that much. Episodes oscillates between the horrors of the creative industry and the compelling character drama about the continuing failures of Sean and Beverly to find any creative satisfaction in Hollywood. And obviously Episodes ends with Sean and Beverly making a show about their experiences in LA, which I'm not going to accept anyone alleging me of spoiling this. If you didn't expect episodes to end with an episode about the characters of episodes making the show episodes... Just, are you dumb? That is the ending of episodes. It was always going to be the way the show ends. So ultimately, creativity does succeed in episodes. The process of it was horrifying in every way. The Hollywood studio system ruined two shows that Sean and Beverly worked really hard on, almost ruined their marriage, and the system is still stacked against any original idea, but they did have one good day. But ultimately I'm brought back to misery. Paul escaped Annie and returned to his incredibly lucrative career, but she did destroy a novel that he worked really hard on. And she was his biggest fan. I was unsettled by episodes. Friends is a show in which realistic people's realistic problems like cheating and backstabbing are disguised by a cuddly and friendly exterior. And Episodes builds itself on the success of that show to tell harsh truths that creatives need to hear. All good shows that are successful are lightning in a bottle. Friends being as successful as it was was a fucking miracle and when something is good, you can always count on the creative industry to do everything it can to learn the wrong lessons.